Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at lists. Um, okay, so in Python programming language, what we've used before to store data is variables. We've used a variable to store a single piece of data, uh, but the nice thing is that um, in Python we're also able to create a special type of variable called a list which will hold a number of data items. Okay, so a list can be thought of as just a very simple table of data. Here's a table of data that you can see. You've got the different items in that list. You've got train, car, foot, bus, taxi. And then you've got the item location. And now please note at this point that um, when we are looking at lists, the item locations start at zero. So the first item is at location zero, second is at location one, and so on and so forth. And in Python, we can create our lists by using the following code. So it's just like we are assigning something into a variable, but we use square brackets to define a list. And then each of these items separated by commas. So item 0 is train, item 1 is car, item 2 is foot, and so on. So this is a simple list with the data in it. Again, please remember that programmers count from 0. So the first item in the list is at position 0. You must remember that. OK, let's have a little look at programming then. So to create a list, very simple. Give our list a name. And then what we've got is we can have square brackets and we can put our items in. So we had mode of transport before. We had train and we separated that with a comma. After we've separated it with a comma, we can add our second item. So it might be taxi third item might be foot next item oops might be car done it again and then finally we could go for a bike okay so we've got different items there in our list now if we print our list let's see what we get Okay, so we will just save that quickly. Then I'll run this. Okay, so you can see that we've created our list and then we've printed our list. And all the items of our list are displayed on the screen. And there's loads of things that we can do to our list here. So one thing that we can do is we can apply a reverse function on our list. Can't spell there we go okay so we've got reverse written down if I then print list again like so let's see what happens Oops. okay so it's printed the list like it should at the start and then it's printed it again after this reverse function has been has been applied to the list so you can see that all of the items there have been reversed so it's still in the center so after um, have a look at reversing. Another thing that we could do is we could actually sort our list. So that's another function that we can apply. So if I type in list.sort and then print our list again, let's see what we get. Okay, so you can see that our items have been sorted and it just so happens that to sort it into alphabetical order is actually the same as reversing. So let's just delete this one so that I can prove to you that sorting definitely gets that in alphabetical order. Okay, so there we go. You can see there that you got the original list and now it's been sorted into alphabetical order. Right, let's do something else. Another thing that we can do is we can add something to our list. So if I want to add something, what I can do is I could write down list.append and then in my brackets I could append an item so it might be that I want to put in scooter print list let's see what happens oh dear right there we go okay so you can see that scooter has been appended onto the end of that list now that's all very well and good but it might be that you want to remove a different item. So what you can do is you can type in list.remove. 
and let's say we want to remove taxi so it should find taxi and remove it let's have a look see what happens okay so we've got the original list we've appended scooter and then you can see here on this final time that we printed the list there is no instance of taxi so that's been removed okay other things that you can do is you can try and find the location of um, a particular item so I could type in list dot index so I'm applying an index function here and let's say I wanted to find the location of the word foot in our list so that we could do something with that particular item what I can do is I could apply this index function what that's going to do is it's going to find the position now obviously I want to be able to store the position um, for a second so I might write down position equals list dot index foot that's going to find the position of foot and put it into a variable called position so now if I print position we should be able to see what happens let's go run external run okay so we've got our list printed we've then run this function and it's found the position of foot to be at position 2 now remember programmers start counting from 0 so this is train is position 1 uh, sorry position 0 taxi is position 1 foot is position 2 so that's worked it out perfectly well okay what else can we do with lists well what we can do is we can count a particular item how many times it's um, appeared in a list so what we can do let's just add another item let's add train again and let's make sure we separate those with commas okay so if I was to put a new variable called count item and I wrote down list dot count and then opened up my brackets and said I want to count all the amount of instances um, that I can of the word train in the list so I write down count, uh, sorry, print. What I could then do is display the amount of times that item comes up. So if I run this, you can see here that it has printed out the list and it's also counted how many times the word train has appeared. It's appeared once, twice, so it's put down the number two there. It could be really useful um, in our programming. Certainly later on uh, when you do your programming tasks uh, the GCSE tasks you will be dealing with lists so these functions are really really important then okay and the last thing is it might be that we want to insert an item but we want to insert it in a particular location so to do that what we do is we apply this function the list dot insert function we open up our brackets but in here what we do is we first of all need to say what location we want it to be um, placed into so that's position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3 is after foot. So if I put 3, comma, and then the item, um, let's put in car again, see if we get another instance of car. And then if I print my list, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see here that it's inserted car into the third position, just like I said let's just make sure that it's definitely that this new car that's been put into that position let's put car 1 let's run that okay so you can see that car 1 has definitely been put into position 3 position 0 1 2 and 3 car 1 exactly what we wanted which is great okay so there's loads of different things that uh, you can do with your list the last thing I want to show you in terms of the basic functions that you can apply to lists is something called a pop function so what we can do, and I can do this all in one go, if I were to print out a list dot pop and then open up my brackets and put in the item number that I want to pop out, so zero for example, and then I were to simply print my list again, let's see what happens. Okay so it's displayed the list at the start like we had before now this list.pop0 will pop out 
the item that is in position 0 which is train and remove it from the list so it doesn't just get rid of it completely it actually pops it out and, and grabs hold of it so that I can I can print it to the screen at that particular instant and then by me printing list again you can see that this time when the list is displayed train is no longer there so that's how the pop function works so what you got there is several functions that you can apply to lists now what I'm going to do finally is just turn this into a little program so we've done some work on the for loop before what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a program which is going to ask the user for their top five um, songs let's say so I'm going to create a list top five I'm going to put down four y in range five so that's going to set off a for loop and I'm going to print the following I'm going to print please enter single number and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of the contents of this variable as it cycles through the loop so the first time it's going to be 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 I'm going to place it just here but because I don't want obviously to say please enter single 0 I want to say please enter single 1 so the first single number the first song number on the list I'm just going to put y plus 1 and then I'm going to finish off with a colon to make it look a little bit more user friendly I'm then going to create an it, a variable called single I'm going to get the user to type in oops, type in a value that goes into single and then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to append whatever they type in onto my list that at the top as you can see I've created a list but there's nothing in it at the moment then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just print a space I'm then going to print a title and it's going to be your top five singles are colon space and then finally to print this out I'm going to put for x in range five oops there we go for x in range five and I'm going to simply print each item of my list in turn so to do that what I can do is I could use square brackets x so it takes the list which is top five and square brackets x basically is going to show each item in turn because we're in an inner for loop so x is going to be zero first of all so the first time around it's going to be top five zero which is the zeroth position of that list and it's going to print that item then what it's going to do is it is going to cycle around again x is going to be a one and it's going to print top five one so the, the next position of the list and so on and so forth and that's going to continue so let's see what happens now if we run this program so enter single number one. Oh, I don't know um, let's say that it is song one there we go single number two song two song three song four song five your top five singles are song one song two song three four and five okay so that's our little program completed there so what we've we've been working with is we've been creating a loop which will ask the user to enter some data the data is going to be appended onto the list as the, uh, the loop cycles through and then finally what we're going to do is use another loop just to display back each of the items that have been entered okay so there's a quick introduction to lists